No, I don't. I don't recommend it. In the book, we also uh, specifically advise against it because that's a case where you have only potential cons and no potential pros. So we recommend at least 15 gram net carbohydrates within one to two hours or within a few hours of the workout. And that's, I mean, that's very easy to, to do, you know, even on a ketogenic diet, you can do that. To a targeted ketogenic diet, you can still get 15 gram net carbs in. So I think that that's very doable for anyone. And there's basically no reason not to do it because if we, in our review, if we look specifically at the studies of fasted versus non-fasted, there is a trend that fasted is worse. Uh, this might be because of psychological mechanisms, people not used to being, not used to training fasted, people right. being hungry, those kind of things. Nevertheless, the, there is a trend for, for evidence in favor of non-fasted training. And with protein intake, we also see this, which is, we don't have a lot of research on this, but we have a, a few studies showing trends for greater performance with protein intake pre-workout, uh, and also greater anabolism, greater direct muscle protein synthesis, mTOR signaling, and probably also reduced protein degradation. Because if you're training and you haven't consumed any protein, then you are you you have no substrate. So you can't build new muscle. The best case scenario is essentially if you're training your biceps fasted, that your body's gonna break down your quads to build your biceps. And that's not really a positive either because the next workout, you're gonna train maybe your quads and then it's breaking down your biceps to build your quads. So you, you need the protein and the workout period is one of the most uh, prime periods through the prime real estate in terms of timing for protein intake. So I, I see no reason to, to even risk that, even though I, I would agree that the research is not terribly strong, that you need to train right. with, with free workout feeding. 